Welcome to the Junior Golf Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping parents and juniors navigate through the journey of junior golf. From fitness to mental coaching, we cover it all on this podcast. Here's your host, Ro Thompson. Three, two, one. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Junior Golf Podcast. I'm your host, Ro Thompson. And man, we got a special guest in the building. Can you hear me okay, Sick? Oh. Yes, sir, I can. All right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got a special guest uh, on the podcast tonight. We have none other than Sage Bradshaw from Hilton Head, South Carolina. Give it up. Sage, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Good. Hey, thanks for being on, man. You know, I, I've, I've yes, been sir. watching you progress in the, uh, in the junior golf space, and I, I like what I see. We'll get to some of that stuff in just a few minutes. But, man, before we get into all the junior golf talk, tell us a little Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, sir. So I'm 16 years old. Um, I'm a graduate in the 2026 class, um, and I live in Hilton Head, and I'm attending Hilton Head Christian Academy. I have two awesome sisters downstairs that are watching, hopefully, <laughs> and uh, and two great, two great parents that um, – are so supportive of me. I couldn't thank them enough. Yes, yes. We've been, we've been, you know, say, I guess we've probably been knowing you for about, what, 10 years now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You coming up in the junior golf ranks, right? You, you and John. Yeah, I don't have, know about that. <laughs> you and John have been playing a, a lot of junior golf tournaments together, U.S. kids, right? Yes, sir. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So, Sage, tell us, take us back to when you first got started, how did you get into the game of golf? Yeah, so I was, so I'm a, I was born in August, my birthday's in August, and uh, for my first Christmas, my granddad gave me a, a set of real golf clubs. I was still in a carrier, so I had no clue what to do with them, or I could, I mean, I couldn't even walk or talk. So it was kind of like one of those presents, and my dad was questioning what, because my dad played college baseball, so he was hoping I was going to be a baseball kid, but um, he gave them to me, and I uh, I was crawling with them under me, and I couldn't have imagined it going any better than how it has so far. And I used to I remember my dad used to record the Masters and the Open and all of those amazing tournaments, and I would wake up, grab my little cup of chocolate milk from the fridge, and walk in there and turn on the TV every morning and watch them golf. Wow! So that's that that's what that's how the journey started. Yes, sir. Good. Now, now, why did you, why did you continue to play golf? Why do you, why do you like, why do you, uh, why do you love golf so much? Because I can tell you love it, but what, what, what made you like really grab hold to golf? I'm a big history buff, and I love to compete. So I mean, this, this is probably the most historic game and has so much tradition from the Masters to Open. I mean, you can walk the grounds as, the same as Jack Nicklaus and Tiger and. Um, all the golf courses, most of them at least, you could go play yourself. And uh, but the bottom line is, I just really enjoy the game. It's cliche, but it has many parallels to life. You have good days and bad days. Um, you usually end up getting bigger gains from the ones that are bad. But I think it's how you handle the process of failure is how you gain the love for the game. And I think that's probably how I enjoyed it so much. And I couldn't imagine playing another sport. Right. Now, so do do you play any other sports or just golf? Just golf. Just golf. Football coaches wanted me to um, come play tight end or O-line or something, but I, I told them I'm, I'm too much of a um, wuss and I don't really want to get hurt. So. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, golf Golf is one of those sports, say, you don't have to worry about contact, you know, getting, yes, get, getting hurt, you know, getting concussions and that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So now, Sage, what have you, what have you been doing – to get so good at this game because I've seen you like really take off in this game. So give us, you know, give us a little, maybe your practice schedule. Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing to get really good at the game of golf. Well, I'm very thankful to be able to live 30 minutes from my coach and Tim Cook. He's uh, since we've moved down here and I've started working with him, he he's been astronomically made the difference and 
Um, I couldn't have asked for a better person to be working in my game with. Um, that being said, we, he's got me working on some stuff with my wedges, um, trying to get in some stock yardages and flighted wedges for the look going into the spring season. Um, I'm also working on trying to flight the ball down or higher um, and being able to work the ball a little bit better versus just trying to go at the flag, which I have a tendency of doing too much. Um, but really just being consistent in practice and trying to make sure every rep is accounted for and um, making sure every swing is with a, a swing thought. Um, I've also been working on my pacing a lot, my tempo with my swing. Yes. I started going to a slower backswing going into the summer this year. And I kind of started getting in this inconsistent during the fall and I had a couple of rough tournaments. Um, but other than that, that's really it. Um, but I really, I really enjoy it. It's been a lot of fun last year working. That's good, Sage. For those of you that have just tuned in, we're talking to Sage Bradshaw. Sage is the number one 2026 player in the state of South Carolina. Uh, he's ranked like 500 in the nation and top 75 in the country in 2026. I, I, hey, Sage, I'm the junior golf guru, so I know all the stats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So Sage, so Sage, give us your practice routine what are you when you go when you go out because golf is one of those sports like your dad can't be at, he can't be everywhere with you know at every practice he's got to work he's got to pay for tournaments he's got to make sure you you know lessons he's got to take care of all of that what do you do when you get to the course what's the first thing you do I always try and get a little bit of um, chipping in before I get a full swing okay. it really helps me be able to warm up but also kind of diversify my shots when I'm hitting them. So like I'll hit some flighted um, wedges and or some high chips and flighted, like high flighted wedges with no spin or low flighted wedges with a lot of spin. But, and I'll drive over to the um, practice facility or the range with my golf cart and hit all kinds of shots. I really like, I'm only hit seven irons mainly when I'm working on irons because it's kind of middle, it gives you that um, short iron field, but also that longer iron field. Um, and then my, I'd like to say my strength is my driver, but it yes. kind of can be my weakness at the same time. Mm. Okay. It can, it'll, I'll hit it good and I'll play well, or I'm sending it left and right and trying to scramble for pars. But right. um, I'm always making sure I get a few drivers in there and then try and do some putting work um, right at the end so that I'm leaving on a good note. Good deal. So I was going, and I was going to actually say, what do you feel is the strongest part of your game? And what do you feel is the, the weakest part that you have to really work hard at? Um, the strongest part I feel like has been my ball striking recently. Okay. Um, thanks to Tim, we've, we've really worked on trying to get my tempo back to where it was, which has helped me gain distance and consistency, which is kind of the best of both worlds. Um, but my weakest part of my game definitely has been my putting. Um, but it's, it's gotten better. I've been doing some stuff on the sand putt lab with Tim. And it's been phenomenal to be able to work on that with him. It's crazy how many numbers they can give you on just a little shot. That's good. That's good. Well, Sage, you've had some some really good finishes this year. And, um, you know, do you feel like you're playing your best golf ever? Um, I feel like I'm playing better than I have in past years. Okay. But I'm looking forward to hopefully getting – better and being able to play my best golf in the future that's kind of been how I've been thinking um you don't have to peak now you want to be able to peak hopefully when I'm hopefully if I make a PGA Tour run um hopefully peak when I'm on there and maybe win a few tournaments but um I do think I'm definitely hitting it better than I have in past years right and we'll talk about PGA in just a few minutes but knowing what you know now Sage you know we got some some parents and we got some junior golfers listening what would you say to the junior golfers that are trying to get better. They may, they may be ranked 5,000 in the country. They may be ranked 2,000 in the country. What, what, would you, what would you recommend to them to help them get better at their game? I, my main thing that I always harp on when people ask me that question is just you have to love it. And you have to surround with people who are also on that journey that want to do the same thing that you want to do. Right. But you have to also embrace the hardships because that's where – that's really where you gain your most, um, your best lessons from and where you learn the most about yourself. And I think um, 
the best, best, best blessing I could ask for coming down here to Hilton Head has been my friends. Um, we play against each other multiple times a week, and uh, which used to be John in Columbia. So yeah, I right. wish that he was down here with us. And now it's been a lot of fun, but um, it definitely has been surrounding with people with, or surrounding myself with people who have the same goals and um, are excited to get better. So that's awesome. Yeah, it was you and Teddy and. Grant Pellucci and all you guys, you know, y'all used to battle a, a lot up here in Columbia. Who, who's some of your friends in, in yes, Hilton Head that you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, so Dave Schmidt, um, he's okay. been my best friend. We were on the same golf team. We go to Hilton Head Christian together. Um, okay. Cade Chris Kunis, um, committed to Maryland. He's a great player. Um, yes. Works with Tim as well. Um, JP Reed and Philip Court, both on my golf team, both go to Hilton Head Christian Academy. Um, Jack Krausor, Tag. I mean, I could sit here and name everybody down here. They're all so good. Right. Um, it's kind of hard to just pick a few, but right. it's been it's been a lot of fun. A lot of good players, man. Too 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 many to like you said. Too many to rattle sure. off. Now, Sage, I've seen you had yes, some, I've seen you have some bad days, and you know I've seen you have a lot of yes, good sir. days. Um, what do you tell yourself when you're having a bad day? You know what you know. You know, things may be a little off, but but what do you try to tell yourself to kind of get your game back in line? What 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 are, what are some of the thoughts that go through your head? Yes, sir. So I always think about how, I mean, my worth is not defined on the golf course. It's always, I mean, ever since I was little, we've always talked about how it's not found in golf, but it's found in the Lord. Um, and that's every time I walk off a golf course, whether it's the, a good day or a bad day, I try and give the glory to God. Um, I definitely would not be where I am without his, without him. And I, I couldn't thank him enough for being alongside with me. Um, but as I was saying earlier, you also have to embrace the bad days. Every player can handle success. Um, I feel like that's where I can separate myself with how I can process the bad days. Don't get me wrong. I get frustrated, but it's try And I try hard to not let a bad shot, bad hole or bad round go to waste. Um, the real value is in the struggle. I'm going to grow more from the bad days than the good. Yeah, and one thing that I can say, Sage, I've never seen you throw a club, have a bad attitude on the course. You've always been a really solid kid on the course, and that's why that's why we've always embraced you. We've always, you know, you you real respectful. You, like I said, you don't you. have a bad attitude. So, man, you know, and and I got to give it to your parents. Your parents has instilled that into you. Great job, Mister Miss Bradshaw. Y'all done Thank an you. excellent job would say that is they are cool. they are pretty awesome yes yes yeah and your, your dad's okay too <laughs> yeah i yeah. mean he's okay i guess right <laughs> ah, i like to have fun with when we're out on the course so sage talk about yes, some of your favorite who's some of your favorite pga tour players um i've always really liked scotty since he came onto the scene um he has such a good head on his shoulders and a great example is like it's a great example to junior golfers. Um, also, one of the things I really like is whenever he won the Masters a couple of years ago, the first thing he said is, I just want to give the glory to God. And I, I really, really admire him for that. Um, I'm also a big fan of Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth, and Stan Burns. Um, I'm, I have the pleasure of being a member at the May River Club. And I actually, I've seen Sam out here a few times. So um, that was pretty cool. But I mean, he's a great dude. That's good. That's good. So, so, so if you could put together a dream pairing and it could be pops, it could be PGA tour, it could be somebody not on the tour, who would your dream pairing be? It would just be me and my dad. Just you and your dad. Um, there's nobody, just, there's nobody in the world that I enjoy playing golf more than with my dad. Um, and we have some great conversations with golf course. And if I couldn't imagine having a better dad or, better best friend so that's good that's really good so so now sage what's it uh what, what's what's in the bag so i'm i actually am all titleist so i have a phantom i have a scotty phantom uh, 5.5 i had a newport 2 um going into last year and i i liked the feel of the blade but mm -hmm. i needed the stability of the mallet gotcha. uh, so that phantom 5.5 kind of offsets it and then I just got fitted for a few new clubs. Um, I got a new set of irons. I went to the newer T100s. Yes. Um, and I'm playing the X100 shaft in them. Okay. And then 
I've got TSR Woods and TSR Driver. Um, they're all TSR threes. Okay. And then I've got Venice shafts in those. Um, and then I have uh, Vokey wedges, 50, 54, and 58. Good, good. Now, what's your what's your secret weapon in your bag, or what's your what's your good luck charm? Do you you have what's the like what's the strangest thing you have in your bag? Um, I have. It's weird. I have a ball marker from like like 10 years ago and it's a plastic ball marker. I never use it. It's from Forest Hills, which is where we remember at in St. Louis when we lived there for a few years. Okay. And I, and I took it out for like a couple of weeks because I forgot to put it back in my bag and I started flying about and I kind of noticed <laughs> that it was um, one of those things. I was like, well, I probably should throw it back in there. But um, my secret weapon probably is my five wood. I love my five wood. You love the five wood? Yeah, because most people don't I love carry the five wood. wood. They carry a three wood and, you know, but not a five wood. How, how far do you carry yes, your sir. five wood? Um, right around 245, 250. Um, if I hit it good, maybe off a tee, I can get it up there at 260, but that's that's kind of hitting it hard. But That's good. Okay. And what are some of your favorite courses, uh, whether it's South Carolina, across the U.S.? What are some of your favorite courses out there? Uh, actually, all mine are in South Carolina. So uh, my favorite is the Ocean Course. Yeah, um, Kiowa. And okay. then – Yes, sir. I played in a couple of tournaments there. Hurricane Junior Golf Tour used to put a tournament on out there, and okay. that was a lot of fun. Um, one year, we actually got fogged out. We didn't even get to play the second day because it was so foggy. Mm -hmm. We couldn't see the back edge of the putting green. Oh, um, wow. It was that It was that foggy? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, sir. And then I'm, a, I'm kind of biased when I say this, but the course out here at Palmetto Bluffs is um, amazing. It's Jack Nicklaus design, so I love Jack Nicklaus design courses. Yeah. Gotcha. So, that's probably two, and then three is probably succession um, out okay. of Buford on okay. Cat Island. Yeah. Good. Now, what's your let's say what's what's your lowest tournament round ever? So my lowest tournament round. So that would have been um, last year in the national high school championship. We got another team. Yes. We out of Texas. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we played the first day. I, can't, I honestly can't even remember the golf course. But it wasn't the Fields Ranch courses, and I shot 67 after Thursday. Um, so that was that's going low. That was pretty cool. The, and then the, um, it was during the Open, so we were watching the Open that night, and they had the little ticker on the bottom that said it was like National High School Invitational, and then it had the kid who was in first, and then it had a, like a bunch of people were stacked up at five under. So I have a picture of that, oh. um, <laughs> and it was it was super cool to be able to see that with my team. And, now, what did the, what did the number one choose? The kid who was the kid who was leading the tournament shot six under or seven under the first day. It was insane. Oh yeah, that's but, so he shot sixty five. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, sir. That's incredible. So yeah, they had some. They, so y'all had some really good kids out there. What what part of Texas was that in? Do you remember? It was in Frisco. Frisco, just outside of Dallas. Was it? Was it? Yes, sir. Okay, so it they, was they, so hot. Right. They have the. Um, I want to say they have the uh, PGA out there now, don't they? In Frisco. Um, yes, sir. That's the, it's at the PGA headquarters. Right. That's correct. That's correct. Good deal. Now, Sage, you're doing all of this. You're playing a lot of golf. You're, you're reaching, you know, some really good milestones in junior golf. Um, if you had, if, 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 if there were some college coaches out there that's listening to this right now, what, what, what would be your top, let's say, they say top three schools. What, where would you like to go and play? Well, that's a, I mean, that's a great question, but I don't really have a specific answer to it. Okay. Um, I, I just know I love this game, and yeah. I want to play it as long as I can. Um, and to do that, I need to make sure I go to a school that will push me and help me reach my full potential. Um, and I know there's going to be a lot of variables in that, just like coaching staff and facilities and team. Yes. But, um, I'm looking forward to whenever that starts in June, and it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I'm excited to be able to talk to some coaches finally, so. That's a that's a that's a really good answer, Sage. Now, if now now let's say, let's say I'm a coach. What can I expect from you? If I if I recruited you on my team, what can I expect from you? Um, honestly, I I always have pushed myself to try and work as hard as I can and get better. Right. Um, I can assure the coach that I'm going to work as hard as I can to make sure that our team help that our team succeeds and that I succeed. And whatever that might be, um, 
not just golf, but academics as well. But, um, and I, I hopefully I'll be able to keep everybody level headed out there. So good. Be a good leader. Be a, be a good leader to the team. Right. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, good. sir. All right. And, um, uh, would you, would you like to give the next level a shot? Without a doubt. I want to play as long as my potential will take me. And I think hopefully that'll be a PGA tour, maybe a few wins, maybe a couple majors, but, um, and that, that really has been my goal since I was little. I always have said I want to play on the PGA Tour, and I'm sticking to that. Good. That's a that's a that's a uh, a very good goal, Sage. That's a that's a it's it, you know it's a it's a it's a it's a small percentage that make it, but if you yes sir make up in your mind that that's what you want, and you put the work in and go after it, you can you can get that done. Good deal. Yes, sir. Thank you. So what's the goal? What's the goal in, in high school golf this year? Well, I mean, I feel like the end goal is always to win a state championship. So we're going to try and run it back and win another one. Um, we had a great, great battle last year with Hilton Head Prep. So that's actually a rival school, which is kind okay. of fun. It's, it's crazy, though, because like all of our other sports are very intense with prep. And we're all really good friends with them. The golf teams just hang out together all the time outside of the golf course. And it's that's a lot good. of fun. So. And what about an individual title? I, I'm not against that. I'll try and I'm gonna try and get two in a row in that one too. So that'll be uh, that'll be pretty fun if I can pull that one out. You can do it, man. I I believe in you, Sage. Yes, sir. And uh, thank you, thank you, man. So so so, Sage. In, in in as we wrap up, um, what would you say to encourage other junior golfers that are striving to be, you know, top in their class? Top in the nation. What would you What would you say to those other junior golfers out there to inspire them? Um, work hard and have fun. Um, you got to embrace the journey. So, just because you have one hiccup doesn't mean that your career is going to be set back. Um, it really has been something. Like my dad is so good. My mom is so good about making sure that I um, make sure that know that my worst not in golf. And no matter how you play, um, no matter how you practice. Um, you've got your worth in the heavenly father and Jesus Christ. And um, just knowing that is one of the key things that I think my parents have taught me and that I've really embraced through my junior golf career. So if you can work hard, have fun and know where you're worth that, I think that you'll go as far as you possibly can in this game. Good, good, good. Now say, you know, we're in a big social media age. How can, how can our listeners, if they have a question about junior golf or, they have questions about golf in general. How can our audience reach you? Yes, sir. So I have Instagram. That's really the only thing I have. Um, my Instagram, I guess would you call it a handle? Um, yes. I'm just getting into this. Kind of stuff, it. so it's <laughs> um, Sage, Sage, Sage Bradshaw 26 is my Instagram handle. So um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or anything. So I'll be happy to answer. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, Sage, this has been, this has been great. Man, I appreciate you doing this. Um, like I said, I've been watching you and I, I love to get juniors on to give their perspective so other juniors can listen because sometimes, you know, y'all don't like to listen to the parents. So, so yeah, maybe, sure, sure. maybe y'all will listen to some of the other juniors that's really succeeding and doing real well, well in the game of junior golf. So again, thank you, Sage. Uh, we appreciate you being on tonight. And I uh, appreciate you agreeing to do this, okay? Yes, sir. Thanks so much for having me. It's good to talk to you and see you again. Thank you for listening to the Junior Golf Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. We hope you enjoyed this new episode. And if you did, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Please share this episode with others who may be interested in this topic. Also, feel free to let us know what topics you'd like to see covered in future episodes. Get in touch in the comments or on any of our social media networks. See you next week for a new episode.